The United States Civil Rights Movement was a long battle that forges on today. After the abolishment of slavery following the Civil War in 1865, African Americans still did not have the rights that they were promised. They were discriminated against and did not have the same opportunities as the white population. Almost 100 years later, African Americans continued to fight for their fundamental rights. Organizations like the Ku Klux Klan were still undertaking extreme measures to show their hate for the black community, with threats and bombs. African Americans could not find respectable work positions and struggled to support their families. They were separated from whites in every aspect of their lives. Many key figures sought to change this, most well known being Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. After his previous efforts failed, he decided to center his attention on Birmingham, Alabama, the most notoriously segregated city in the country. However, when King was jailed in 1963 for holding protests, it became apparent that it was becoming difficult for adults to march. Janice Nixon, just eight years old at the time, said, Now our parents worked jobs, they worked long hours, they worked for the for the white man, they scrubbed floors, they did all these um, demeaning jobs just so we could have what we needed to survive. So in saying that, our parents were, they, they were not in the place where they could actually go out and march because they would lose their jobs. When adults marched, they either lost their jobs, were jailed, or both, and thus were unable to support their families. A new strategy had to be used. It was then that Minister James Bevel, one of King's partners in the civil rights movement, suggested using a weapon that no one had dared touch before, children. During the Children's Crusade of 1963, King and Bevel organized and rallied thousands of children to march from their schools in Birmingham and protest for their rights. However, Despite the peaceful nature of their protests, they were met with shocking violence. This event brought the issues of civil rights into an even brighter spotlight, forcing the United States government to take action. The children were excited that they could finally take a stand and make a difference when it was obvious the adults couldn't. Planning the event was a tedious task, but the kids put their hearts into it. According to Ms. Nixon, one of the many children who marched, we would all meet at this church uh, and we would come up with strategies. We would sing a Negro spiritual song. We would just try to uh, think of ways that we could make a difference in Birmingham. So we would meet every week and we would get a plan. And in doing that plan, we would decide, like on Saturdays or whatever, we would go out to this building and we would make signs. We would make signs because we were getting ready to, to do our march. And we marched, we did the non-violent marches. And even as a child, at eight years old, I was there making freedom signs and uh, preparing to march the streets of Birmingham for equal rights. On May 2nd, 1963, kids left their schools in and around Birmingham to peacefully protest through the streets. The children would learn the time and nature of the protest by secret codes given by prominent black radio announcer Shelley Stewart. As told by Janice. Shelley Stewart was a very prominent uh, black radio announcer, even back in those days. But he was very instrumental in helping us to form uh, our demonstration. He would go on the radio and he would make us announce like, well, it's going to rain today. Signals for us to know that, okay, you all are going to march today, but they're going to put the water holes on. And they were called like, bring your toothbrush today. That meant that the police are going to be there, they're going to put you in jail, and you're going to be there for a while. Right? He would say something like, okay, it's time to shake, rally, roll. That meant that for us, it was time for us to gather. When these instructions were given, hundreds of students would walk out of their classrooms and prepare to march, gathering their signs and members from other nearby schools along the way. Even though this was a non-violent protest, the authorities did not respond the same way. By the end of the first day, Bull Connor, Birmingham's pro-segregation police commissioner, and his police force had arrested 959 children, ranging from ages 6 to 18. In the consecutive days, these children were met with powerful water hoses, batons, and police dogs. By May 7th, Connor and his force had already jailed over 3,000 demonstrators. 
Janice Nixon described the scene. They, they, beat, they beat black people with billy clubs. They put the dogs on, on us. Uh, the water holes were full of force, so you can imagine. The water was so forceful until it could rip the clothes off your body, and it did. It ripped hair out of people's head. The water was just that forceful. They, they would hold the dogs to allow the dogs to attack the marches. And, and mind you now, these are all peaceful, non-violent. It, there was no violence. All thing we did was we would uh, sing and pray and carry our fires. Walk the streets of Birmingham for equal rights. Okay. And, and that's the treatment that we got. Miss Nixon's older sister was arrested during the march, and dogs were set on her brother, but they did not give up. Although the children were being met with inhumane cruelty, most continued their efforts, never once resorting to violence. The news of the children's peaceful protests and the violence they were met with in Birmingham spread through the United States like wildfire, attracting the attention of Americans nationwide. When the media was there, and they, they broadcast this, is, this is actually what got the attention of people all over the United States to see that this type of, of treatment was being done to the black people in Birmingham. You know, it, it showed the bombings because there were a lot of bombs that were set off in Birmingham. Actually, Birmingham became known as Birmingham. Although thousands of protesters were arrested and many more injured or killed from the police brutality or bombings by the Ku Klux Klan, the children would not give up. Finally, on May 10, 1963, a compromise was reached. The city of Birmingham conceded to the wants of the black population and began to desegregate Birmingham. To start, they put an end to segregation in businesses and schools. And although the Board of Education wanted to expel protesters, Officials overturned this request. Additionally, all protesters who were jailed were freed. The Children's Crusade not only showed a victory for the civil rights movement, but it demonstrated strength in numbers and the power of those united. This was our big event. They couldn't do anything about it. So Mr. Bell said, let's let the children make a difference. So that's what they did. They didn't stop anybody. I don't even think they could have stopped anybody. Because everybody, we, we, we were all determined and we were all on the same, we were all on the same path and we were all trying to fight for equal. We, we saw the mistreatment of our parents. You see what I'm saying? Somebody had to make a difference. So that's when the kids of Birmingham decided to make the difference. As a result of the children's perseverance, real change was made, albeit slowly, but groundbreaking all the same. Not only did it change life in Birmingham, but it caught the attention of President John F. Kennedy, who delivered a statement that would finally guarantee African Americans the rights they deserved. We have no class or caste system, no ghettos, no master race, except with respect to Negroes. Now the time has come for this nation to fulfill its promise. The events in Birmingham and elsewhere have so increased the cries for equality that no city or state or legislative body can prudently choose to ignore them. The fires of frustration and discord are burning in every city, north and south, where legal remedies are not at hand. Redress is sought in the streets, in demonstrations, parades, and protests, which create tensions, threaten violence, and threaten lives. We face, therefore, a moral crisis as a country and people. It cannot be met by repressive police action. It cannot be left to increase demonstrations in the streets. The events in Birmingham, Alabama that spring of 1963 were pivotal in advancing the civil rights movement, a movement dedicated to ensuring the fair and equal treatment of all people, regardless of race. The children of Birmingham survived the kind of injustice that most of us today cannot begin to fathom. We cannot let their story die. Rather, we must share it, with every distressing detail included. Their legacy needs to live on so that our country can learn from our history.